Okay, we're in this episode of On the Wrist from Off the Cuff Tip for another cool little preview for you guys from the brand Alto 8 Watches, which were founded as recently as 2020. Now, Alto is 8 in Italian, and it's also the same shape as the symbol for infinity. They believe the number 8 means the perfect life works in an 8-hour cycle of 8 hours of sleep, eight hours of work, eight hours of entertainment. There's just a certain magic to the number eight for them, as well as, of course, infinity. Now, in terms of the type of watch, this is a dive watch. Some key conversations in the language you're looking for a diver. Of course, you're gonna want water resistance. Typically, some type of screw on a crown. You're gonna want something that's tough, legible, with a dive time bezel, and a dive extension is always nice if on bracelet. This is their Coral Stewart, and this is in the black colorway, and this is, of course, a pre-production prototype uh, sent into the channel. Now, essentially, they were inspired by classic underwater cameras so it's square design seamlessly blends retro and modern aesthetics paying homage to the 1930s it adds a unique touch of predominantly circular design of today's diving watches um, so they really wanted to present the mysterious world of uh, you know underwater coral through that circular dial opening so definitely has a little bit of a porthole feel but the squared off uh, dimensions on the case it's not just you know frivolously square to be different it's yeah underwater camera housings which I think is actually really cool and before I knew that I would say I was probably a little bit less inspired by this piece but after knowing what inspired it and its design language I think that's actually pretty cool so the price uh, is still to be announced uh, Alto 8 uh, they do typically focus on offering high concept along with high value, so uh, stay tuned for that. I'll definitely leave links to the, in uh, the, the description if you guys want to know more. But with that said, let's go ahead, zoom the camera out, get this piece in hand, and take a closer look. Okay, guys, now check this out. I know probably from afar you're just going to see, oh, it's just a square watch but i will say right in in terms of dive watches and wanting symmetry they went the extra mile they even have you know an extra crown here that actually moves that internal rotating bezel and it again it really keys into that symmetry and there's a lot of nice little details like the vented um silicone strap here which can be a bit uh a bit of a dust magnet here and there uh let me see what is what is that okay so that's one drawback, but if you're gonna be using this as a functional piece, then, you know, these getting wet, it's just gonna wipe all of that grime off and it's gonna be extremely comfortable and extremely pliable. So, a little less to worry about. Now, when we come to the dimensions, this has a 45 millimeter diameter. It's only 12.7 millimeters thick. And then also, of course, 45 millimeters lug to lug. So this is truly squared off, uh, which is pretty nice. 316 L stainless steel, brushed and polished. And it actually does even have um, some matte blasted accents along with those polished accents, uh, as you can see here, which definitely add a bit to that more industrial aesthetic. So very cool. And it does help kind of break down the visual weight when you look at it uh, versus like a typical slab side at least here you're going to be getting kind of these outer pieces that feel like a little bit of a framed outer section uh, which I think visually are quite appealing now uh, the crystal is a flat sapphire and then the bezel inside is a bi-directional inner rotating bezel so I first I got to unscrew it right and then I can turn it and there's actually even clicks to it which is really interesting like it has like a yeah that's that's pretty cool it has like a slight obviously you won't be able to pick it up on the camera but i will say as you turn it you do feel some certain clicks and the nice thing is it lets you know like hey that's centered like i didn't have to look at that to do that i actually was able to feel the clicks so i knew that it was going to be stopped uh, right where i wanted it to so very very cool now uh in terms of some more details guys the crown is signed on this side and signed on this side so you'll just have to remember that <laughs> the three o'clock crown uh versus let's say the nine o'clock crown but i think it's again it's a cool concept now, uh, getting on to the case back, guys, a pretty stark affair here. Of course, it has a little diving bell helmet, uh, which is very, very cool. 
very old school there and then this is screwed in because this is a multi-piece case i'm sure as you can tell now inside of here you're gonna have the seiko instruments nh36 movement which has a 41 hour power reserve has a three hertz beat uh, or 21 600 vibrations per hour in terms of that sweep uh, which would be about six ticks per second now um Getting into the dial, I think this is where it really stands out. It's that coral, that 3D coral inspired pattern with that gradient finish. And I think the gradient finish is what really helps this thing pop. And again, it just, of course, in the black colorway, it's probably the least inspired in terms of uh, fun factor, but it also means it's gonna be probably uh, the most popular and uh, uh, you know the most versatile. So you're also gonna get raised indices, which you guys can see uh, very nicely there. And then they're using Japanese Super Luminova, but it's unspecified, you know, whatever particular uh you know grade or or whichever one they're using but it is japanese now in terms of the water resistance the nice thing is you're going to get nice amount there right check that out is it can you see it on the dial yes 300 meters or 100 feet of water resistance very nice and then here you're going to have a hooded lug um maybe i should say semi hooded because and that, that goes full on hooded, right? It cuts underneath so you don't see the top of the strap. Uh, and it does have a 22 millimeter lug width, which means if you don't like it on this strap, you can try it on others. It does have quick release spring bars, which is great. You're gonna get this ventilated silicone strap with quick release spring bars. And there's about a two millimeter taper down to 20 millimeters at the signed pin buckle. And I do like the, uh, you know, the little ornamental kind of uh, 3D texturing that they've done on here. And it's just, it's very clean. You even do have, of course, some spots on the underside to help channel water and sweat, etc. And then on the top side, uh, you're getting just a little bit, I feel like that kind of framed look. It looks cool. It definitely ties in to the case itself. Now, uh, with all that said, let's actually get it on the wrist and see how it wears. Okay guys, check that out. <laughs> As you can see, nice full sized uh, setup, at, but at 45 millimeters, uh, thanks to that shorter lug to lug at 45, uh, it actually wears quite good. Of course, it does look quite large, guys, bordering on oversized. But for a tool watch, um, I think it definitely wears its weight really well. Look at that nice side profile there, guys. Very cool. Very nice and clean. And of course, if I do get my wrist a bit too close to the lens, you're gonna get some perspective distortion. It's gonna make the watch seem much larger than it actually is. So what I like to do is keep my wrist nice and low here and then just tighten up the frame so you guys can still get a detailed look. Well, just, you know, maybe at a bit of a true aspect ratio as to how this may lay on your own wrist. And although I do have a slightly larger than average uh, seven and a half uh, inch wrist, I will say you guys can see that it's quite round. It's it's a taller wrist. It's not just flat and wide and super accommodating. So of course I'm always going to also be conscious of you know uh, the proportions and the ultimate uh, you know measurements on a watch to make sure that it sits well. And I think this one does. And for the theme, it's not like this is a dress watch meant to go under the cup. This is a fun watch. It's the, it's a feature type of watch, right? Like they went through the trouble of getting your attention for that dial, giving you that theme with that underwater, uh, you know, just, ooh. There's a lot of cool ideas happening here, and I think it comes together relatively well. I mean, high concept, not quite as high concept as the last Alto 8 that I did, which had the wandering hour, and I think the coolest thing about that is they actually took a very high concept and very high design uh, movement and, and kind of made it more sedate and more versatile in terms of that you know roulette-inspired style. Here, they're definitely going the other direction where they're taking a very simple movement, right? Just a little... Uh, you know, day date action here, hacking and hand winding, good enough. Um, but they actually have turned it into something that I think is really quite exciting uh, in terms of its packaging and its overall theme. Looks really cool, guys. Check that out. It just sits really nicely. And I mean, you know, if you were used to wearing things like Apple Watches, this isn't going to feel, you know, uh, completely overwhelming uh, at the same time. Or let's say like uh, on the other side of the collecting uh, gambit, you're going to have something like a Seiko Tuna, right? Um, this definitely has that uh, feel where this is, feels like a functional instrument that you're going to be using and uh, less 
like just your you know maybe your only source of timekeeping you're definitely wearing this with a purpose and uh part of it is to enjoy the way that it looks and and everything that it offers aesthetically the other part is to just you know that romantic idea that connection um with going getting out there and you know adventuring into the unknown in the depths so with that said let's actually get it off the wrist set up for some loom shots the light transition and closing thoughts okay let's go ahead and hit the lights here hey, hey as you can see Pretty decent in the loom, especially considering this is a pre-production prototype, which I'm sure they're going to, you know, add extra loom when it comes to the production. Uh, but you can see that actually glows pretty nicely. Uh, to me, it definitely has more of a blue hue tone to it. So it's going to be similar to like a BGW9. But again, they're using a particular uh, Japanese loom here versus a Swiss. But one thing I always like to work in is a bit of a low light transition because you're not always going to be out in the middle of a field enjoying direct sunlight. A lot of times you're going to find yourself coming in and out of buildings, walking underneath overhangs, or just hanging out underneath the shade of a tree. So it is nice to see what these colors, textures, and finishes render like in less than optimal lighting. Wow, that is a looker. Check that out. Ooh. Yes, let's even get into a bit of harsh lighting here, which typically could expose any types of production defects. But all you're going to see here is actually some pretty impressive graining on that flat uh, vertical satin over the top. Then you see those little high polished uh, accents there on the beveling and the chamfering, uh, not just on the bezel, but even the case, the little sides, that framed area that it even has some skeletonization uh, on the crown guards. That looks really cool. And it's actually still quite legible. Check that out. There's a lot of contrast around there. And I will say when we're when we're looking at it straight on and in you know earlier in the video it's easy to kind of appear almost washed out right because of the dimpling because they went with at least in this one the black right it'll probably better uh, contrast on some of the other combinations like the blue or the green but here you're seeing that it's not just the colorways that contrast it's also the way they did the loom and, and the way they did these cutouts and, and everything like that. So that actually looks really, really good. I'm pleasantly surprised. Um, you know, just because typically when you start getting into the more higher concept stuff, those little nuances like good loom, uh, those can be some of the first things that are traded off, right, for that ultimate kind of daylight aesthetic. But here you see it looks good in daylight and uh, in transitional lighting. This thing still looks pretty killer. So with that said, guys, Closing thoughts on the wrist, thanks to the short 45 millimeter lug to lug, this squared off diver wears surprisingly well. Um, it feels like a purpose built professional diving instrument uh, versus just, you know, a casual timepiece. So, if that's what you're looking for, I think you'll really enjoy this. In terms of model variants, you guys can definitely check the links. Um, in terms of trying to find those options and availability currently um, at the time of recording this. I'm not sure if they've launched yet, but I know that they'll be launching very soon uh, in uh, April of 2024, um, maybe mid to end of April. Now, in terms of comparable models, it's really hard to assign a comparable to such a unique, you know, borderline wild card style of diver, um, especially without knowing what the final price will be. Uh, uh, so without me knowing the final price point, I can't say under a thousand, under 500, you know, or anything like that in terms of the comparables. But I will say as kind of its own unique timepiece in a vacuum, um, this thing is cool. So uh, bottom line for me, guys, uh, this will clearly will be a polarizing piece like most of Alto 8's designs. But, you know, I can see plenty of collectors getting a kick out of this quirky little diver. But let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. If you liked the video, please hit like. And if you haven't already, please subscribe for more content just like this. Thanks, guys. Um.